What is going on, YouTube squad? Welcome back to the channel. Um, since I started making disc golf content and putting it on my channel, I've gotten about 10 or 11 new subscribers. So shout out to you guys. You guys are awesome. Um, so today, this is Discademy number two. If you want to see Discademy number one, it's going to be up in this corner or this corner. I'll know when I edit it. <laughs> um, so this is a follow-up. In today's Discademy, I'm going to be discussing flight numbers. So as you can see, a lot of discs have flight numbers printed on them. Some are on the bottom, some are in the middle. It doesn't matter. It's whatever the manufacturer decides. But flight numbers typically dictate the flight path of a disc. What does that mean? When you throw a disc properly, meaning, you know, you have a clean release, it doesn't wobble, you get some good speed on it, it will basically take a certain flight path based on how it is designed. And each manufacturer, when they come out with new discs, basically tests the disc, you know, hundreds if not thousands of times and comes up with an average flight path. So, the four aspects of, the, of flight numbers are speed, glide, turn, and fade. So the first one there is speed. That is dictated by the shape of the rim. This is a putter, so it has a very blunt rim like I showed you guys in my last video. Putter here with a blunt rounded rim. Fairway driver with a bit of a thinner profile. You know, it's still got some thickness there, but uh, it's, it's much more um, aerodynamic. It'll cut through the air a little bit better. And then this is a distance driver, which is even more slim, built to cut through the air more and get more distance. So this putter here, this is an Innova AVR. This is typically what you will find in an Innova starter pack. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that has a speed of two. So basically what speed is, and I took notes this time, so I'm reading my notes over here. <laughs> um, speed is dictated by the rim shape, like I said, but basically what it means is it is a number ranging from one all the way up to 15. And basically the lower it is, the less speed you need to put on the disc to get its full flight path. So this putter here next to me has a speed of two. This fairway driver, it's faded off a bit, but this fairway driver, which is one of my favorites, has a speed of seven, which is about right in the middle of that one to 15 range. And then this Latitude 64 Sapphire with this really cool stamp on it has a speed of 10. So it's getting, it's getting towards that upper echelon of speed. Um, personally, I carry a 13 and a 14 speed in my bag, mostly for forehands, um, just because I have a really clean and good arm speed uh, on my forehand throws. So I need those high speed discs to match that arm speed to get a full flight path. Um, so even though putters, fairway drivers have lower speed um, not coefficients, but lower, lower speed numbers than a typical distance driver. Um, some pros can throw like a pro can probably throw this over 400 feet, which is absolutely ridiculous. I really don't throw putters, but pros can do it. It's wild. So that's speed. I hope I covered that effectively and you all understand that. So the second one is glide. So what glide is, is it's the coefficient of lift for the disc. Lift meaning the aerodynamic force of wind hitting a certain object and, you know, lifting it in the air, just like an airplane. Airplanes have basically what gets an airplane off the ground is the force of lift. That is the physical aerodynamic name for it. I don't know how else to explain that. But glide of a disc is the coefficient of how much lift a disc will get when it's in the air. So this putter here has a glide of three, 
which is about right in the middle of that range. Glide can range from zero to six, I believe. There might be there might be glide um, in the seven or eight range, but that's pretty wild. Um, so this fairway driver here has a glide of five, and then this distance driver has a glide of six. So basically what glide means is it just indicates how long a disc will float in the air if it's thrown properly. Um, so this putter will float a good amount, but this fairway driver and distance driver will float even more, basically meaning it will stay in the air longer. Now, the other side of the coin of that, if the glide is higher, meaning it's four, five, or six, that's, that's kind of a high glide, that means it can be affected by the wind very easily. So if it's very windy out, um, actually this one will get affected the most because it has a glide of six. If it's very windy out, I'm probably not throwing this because if the wind gets a hold of this thing, it's just going to take it wherever the wind is blowing. Um, so glide, high glide is good for days where you have ideal conditions. Your disc will just keep on floating on its flight path and get full flight. It'll be beautiful. But on a windy day, you may want to use lower glide discs. So the third flight number when it comes to disc golf is called turn or high speed turn. Um, basically what this is, is an indication of how far your disc will deviate off of a straight flight path. Um, these numbers can range anywhere from negative four to positive two. Um, and this is where it gets kind of complicated. So, so like this putter has a turn of zero, meaning it really should not, if you throw this flat, it really should not deviate off that straight flight path. Same with this Explorer. And remember, I said this is at high speeds. So when the disc slows down, that's a different topic. That'll be next. Um, but at high speeds, it should stay exactly on the angle you threw it on. If I throw this flat, it should stay flat the entire time because it has a turn of zero. Now, this distance driver has a turn of negative two. So what does that mean? That means if I throw this disc flat at its proper speed, again, this is a speed 10, so I need to put some power on this. With a turn of negative two, if I throw this backhand, it should go straight for a little bit, turn to the right, and then when it slows down, it'll come back to the left and fade. Fade is the last flight number. We're gonna talk about that shortly. So now you may be asking, okay, so if negative turn means it's gonna to turn to the right on a backhand, what does that mean for a forehand? If I throw that same disc forehand, that means it's gonna go straight for a little bit, turn left, and then fade back to the right. And it would, be, it would be the same thing for a lefty backhand is equivalent to my righty forehand, and a righty backhand is equivalent to a lefty forehand. Um, let's see. So, last thing when it comes to turn, some manufacturers actually label some discs as having positive turn. So basically what that means is that, let's say this disc had a positive turn, if I throw this backhand, that basically means this disc, when it's at a high speed, is going to want to go left, which is also the direction it's fading in. Um, I believe that Discraft is the only manufacturer that does this, and a lot of people have complained about it. Um, it's very uncommon that you'll see a disc with positive turn on it because, you know, once you start playing disc golf and you start to understand this system, Intuitively, positive turn really doesn't make any sense. Um, I hope that's not too complicated for you guys. Leave a comment down below if you need me to explain further. Um, and then lastly, the fourth and final flight number is fade. Or some people call this low speed fade. This is basically the behavior your disc does when it's starting to slow down and it's finishing its flight. So this putter, for instance, has a fade of one. 
Um, fade can be anywhere from zero to, I believe, seven, six or seven, which is a very severe fade. So basically what that means is this range is a indication of how severe your disc will dive to the ground when it is starting to slow down. Um, and the direction this movement occurs all depends on which direction your disc is spinning in. So the, it's again, it's very complicated. I know I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible. So the way I figured this out and it took me a little while is if I think about throwing a backhand, wherever the tangential direction is going forward. So if I'm throwing backhand, that means that this side of the disc is spinning tangentially forward. I hope you brushed up on your geometry before this. <laughs> tangentially just means if you drew a straight line that touches the circle, meaning this disc, at one point. So whichever line on, on whatever side is going forward, the disc, when it slows down, will dive towards that direction. So for a backhanded righty person like myself, fade, the disc will always fade left unless it has a fade of zero. That means it's just gonna keep going straight at the end. Um, and on a forehand, it's gonna do the opposite because this right side here is moving, is spinning forward. That means it will dive off to the right. So this has a fade of one. There are some discs out there that have a fade of zero. So it really won't deviate off that straight flight path even at the end. Um, however, this fairway driver has a fade of two. So, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna dive towards the ground a little bit. Um, this distance driver has a fade of one and a half. So it's about the same. It's gonna dive a little bit once it slows down. Um, there are discs out there such as the Discmania Tilt, which is a new, um, very strange driver <laughs> designed by Simon Lazat. Uh, that has a fade of six or seven, I believe. And basically even a pro player or a very avid disc golfer can't even throw the thing straight for more than 200 feet. It'll go straight for about a hundred and it just dives. Like the, the fade is so severe, it's actually nuts. But again, that range will go from zero to six or seven. Typically for me, I'm throwing something with a fade anywhere between zero and four, I believe. I don't think I have anything higher than a four fade in my bag. But anyway, yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Those are the four flight numbers. Um, if you guys need any extra explanation, please leave a comment down below. Let me know. The last two flight numbers can get a little confusing, especially when you're not seeing it and I'm just talking to you about it. So if you need any extra tips or pointers, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this video today. This was Discademy number two, and I hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a good weekend, everybody. Peace out.